my previous lecture, we have started about uh, introduction to cluster analysis and I have explained how to handle interval types of data. Then I have started about importance of standardization. In this lecture, we will see that what is the effect of standardization because sometime standardization may mislead your clustering structure and I will explain different types of distances computation between the objects because for different types of data set there are different way to compute the distances. So, that I will explain then many time when we collect the data it is not necessary that we will collect all the data sometimes there may be a missing data if the data is missed how to handle that that also we will cover in this lecture. Now, let us see the effect of standardization. I have taken one sample problem with a numerical example. This problem is taken from this book uh, finding groups in data an introduction to cluster analysis by Leonard Kaufman and Peter Russo it is a John Wiley publishers. There are 4 persons age year in terms of year and height in terms of centimeters given. Suppose, if you take age on horizontal axis and height on vertical axis, you can mark this all 4 persons A, B, C, D. So, what we are able to understand there is a distinct cluster is there because A, B is one group, one cluster, C, D in another cluster. Now, the same data let us standardize after standardizing again we will go for a clustering let us see how it appears. In figure 1, we can see the distinct clusters. Let us standardize the data of table 1. For standardizing, we should know the mean and standard deviation. Standard deviation otherwise mean absolute deviation. So, the mean of age equals to m 1 equal to 37.5 just by adding all the ages and divided by the number of data set and the mean absolute deviation it is not standard deviation it is the mean absolute deviation of the first variable works out to be S n equal to 2.5. How we are finding mean uh, absolute deviation uh, that variable minus mean for example, 35 minus 37.5 for second variable 40 minus 37.5 we have to take only the positive value there are 4 data set. So, the mean absolute deviation is 2.5 therefore, the standardization convert 40 to plus 1 how we got 40 is convert standardized to 1 we know that this is x minus mu divided by s. So, x is 40 mu that is m is 37.5 divided by uh, mean absolute deviation 2.5 equal to 1 and same way age 35 is standardized to minus 1. How we got the minus 1? 35 minus mean divided by mean absolute deviation. So, it is minus 2.5 divided by 2.5 it is minus 1. The same way for the variable m 2 the mean is 175 and mean absolute deviation for variable 2 is 15. So, each variable in the second column also standardized for example, 190 centimeter is standardized to plus 1 and same way 160 centimeter is standardized to minus 1. The result data matrix which is unitless because we have standardized is given in the table 2. Note that the new averages are 0 and the mean deviations equal to 1. So, this table 2 shows that the standardized table for each variable that is variable 1 and variable 2. Even when the data are converted into very strange units standardization will always yield the same numbers that is advantage of standardization. Now, plotting that values of table 2 in the figure 2 does not give any very exacting result. So, what you have done in the previous table we have the standardized values for both the variables. So, when you plot it there are 4 points are appearing. So, this points is not giving any useful result. So, figure 2 shows no clustering structure because 4 points lie at the vertices of a square. One could say that there are 4 clusters each consisting of single point or that there is only one big cluster containing 4 points. Here standardization is no solution. So, what we have seen many time when you go for standardization, the standardization may not give the useful result that is what this example shows. Now, let us look at the choice of measurements. Here the measurement means the units of that variable. What is the merits and demerits? 
the choice of measurement units gives rise to relative weight of variables. Expressing a variable in smaller units will lead to large range for that variable which will then have a large effect on the resulting structure. So, what will happen if variable is in smaller units? So, that will give you a larger effect in the your clustering result. On the other hand, by standardizing one attempts to give all variables in equal weight in that hope that achieving objectivity. As such, it may be used for practitioners who possesses no prior knowledge. So, the benefit of standardization is that anybody those who are not having any prior knowledge about the problem also can do with the help of standardized variables they can do the cluster analysis because there is a unit less. However, it may well be that some variable are intrinsically more important than others in a particular application and then the assignment of weight should be based on the subject matter knowledge. Every time because standardization is giving equal weight sometime some variables are more important. So, for that variable with the help of experts we can give a higher weightage for that variable. On the other hand, there have been attempts to devise clustering techniques that are independent of scale of the variables. There are many techniques people are trying to come with a yeah? different clustering models. Distances computation between objects. The next step is to compute distances between the objects in order to quantify their degree of dissimilarity. It is necessary to have a distance for each pair of objects i and j. The most popular choice is Euclidean distance. What is this Euclidean distance? The distance between variable i comma j equal to x i 1 minus x j 1 whole square plus x i 2 minus x j 2 whole square up to x i p minus x j p whole square. When the data are being standardized, one has to replace all x by z in this expression. If you are standardizing instead of x, you have to use z. This formula corresponds to the true geometrical distance between points with the coordinates x i 1 up to x i p and x j 1 up to x j p. See the Euclidean distance, suppose if you want to move from point A to B, say this is uh, point A and B. Let us find out the concept behind the Euclidean distance. Suppose if you want to move, if you want to point A to B, you can directly you can fly from one point to because the birds will fly from A to B. So, that distance is called Euclidean distance. Let us consider the special case with P equal to 2, where there are only two variable. Figure shows two points with the coordinates x i 1 comma x i 2 and x j 1 comma x j 2. It is clear that the actual distance between objects i and j is given by the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle yielding expression in previous slide by virtue of Pythagoras theorem. So, this formula is nothing but the hypotenuse. So, this is as per the Pythagoras theorem. So, square of adjacent side and square of opposite side equal to square of hypotenuse. Let us go to the uh, next uh, distance measures that is a Manhattan distance. It is a uh, another well known metric is the city block or Manhattan distance. It is given by x modulus value of x i 1 minus x j 1 plus x i 2 minus x j 2 modulus value only the positive values up to x i p minus x j p. Suppose, this is a city map. If you want to move from point A to B, right? There are two way, one way is directly you can suppose we are if you are a bird or you are moving if you want to go A to B you can fly otherwise the flight goes from point A to point B. But if you are, there is a fire suppose a fire engine it has to move it has to follow a rectangular distance. So, because the, the, there are different streets. So, this distance is nothing but your Manhattan distance. You see that the, the distance of Manhattan distance will be larger than the your Euclidean distance for the green one is Euclidean distance, the blue one is nothing but the Manhattan distance. Let us interpret the meaning of Manhattan distance. Suppose you live in a city where the streets are all north south or east west and hence perpendicular to each other. Let figure 3 be the part of street map of such a city 
where the streets are portrayed as a vertical and horizontal lines. So, if you want to move from point A to point B, you cannot directly, you, can, you cannot go by shortest path, you have to take a, a rectangular distance. Another name for this Manhattan distance is rectilinear distance. Then the actual distance you would have to travel by a car or for a fire engine to get from location i to location j would be x i 1 minus x j 1 modulus value plus x i 2 minus x j 2 modulus value. This would be the shortest length among all possible paths from i to j. Only a bird could fly straight from point i to j thereby covering equilibrium distance between these points. So, the example of uh, the bird which covers point A to B is the example for your equilibrium distance. The mathematical requirements of a distance function, both equilibrium metric and Manhattan metric satisfy the following mathematical requirements of a distance function for all objects i comma j and h. The first property is d1, d i comma j is greater than 0 d i comma j is greater than equal to 0, d i comma i 0, d i comma j equal to d j comma i, d i comma j is less than or equal to d i comma h plus d h comma j. Condition d 1 merely states that the distances are non-negative numbers and d 2 says that the distance of an object itself is 0 because i comma i is 0. Axiom d 3 is the symmetry of the distance function. The triangle inequality axiom d 4 looks a little bit more complicated, but it is necessary to allow a geometrical interpretation. It says essentially that going directly from i to j is shorter than making a detour over object h. For example, Suppose this is i, this is j, this is h. So, what says moving point i to j, this will be shorter than moving i to h and h to j, that is your triangular inequality. Distance computation between the objects, if d of i comma j equal to 0 does not necessarily imply that i equal to j, because it can very well happen that two different objects have the same measurement for the variable under study. What is the meaning of this one is if the distance between object i comma j equal to 0, it need not necessary that always it should be i equal to j. Sometimes there may be two objects which is not i equal to j, their distance also may be 0. However, the triangle inequality implies that i and j will then have the same distance to any other object h because d of i comma h is less than or equal to d of i comma j plus d of j comma h equal to d of j comma h. At the same time, d of j comma h is less than or equal to d of j comma i plus d of i comma h equal to d of i comma h which together imply that d of i h equal to d of j h. The next measure of the distance is Minkowski distance. A generalization of both Euclidean and Manhattan metric is the Minkowski distance. It is given by d of i comma j equal to modulus of x 1 i minus x j 1 to the power p plus x i 2 minus x j 2 to the power p and so on plus x i n minus x j n to the power p whole to the power 1 by p, where p is any real number larger than or equal to 1. This is also called the LP metric for the Euclidean distance p equal to 2 and for Manhattan distance p equal to 1 as a special case. Now, let us take some example and calculate the Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance and Minkowski distance. Let x 1 equal to 1 comma 2 and x 2 equal to 3 comma 5 represents two objects. This is point 1. So, call it is 
x1 this is point x2. The equilibrium distance between these two point x1 x2 is you see that it is 2 square plus 3 square square root it is 3.61. The Manhattan distance between the two point is this 2 plus 3. So, this is your equilibrium distance this is Manhattan distance. You see that the equilibrium distance is smaller than the Manhattan distance because in Manhattan distance you cannot have the direct route you have to take only a rectangular route that will be the larger. So, this line represents equilibrium distance move here then move here when you add that that represents your Manhattan distance. Let us take another example n by n matrix this is one of the input for a cluster analysis for example when computing equilibrium distance between the objects of the following table can be obtained in the next slides. For example, there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 there are 8 persons their weight and heights are given. Now, let us find out how to make a n by n matrix by calculating the distance between each persons each objects. So, generally if you want to know the equilibrium distance between B and E for example, B and E that is nothing but 49 minus 85 whole square otherwise 85 minus 49 because we are squaring it plus 156 minus 178 whole square you take square root that is 42.2. So, the distance between B and E is 42.2 like that for between A and B A and C we can find out they see that the n by n matrix the distance between a and a is 0 you see that all the diagonal will be 0. The distance between a and b is 69.8 so, distance between a and c is 2.0. So, in my previous slides I have explained the distance between b and e is 42.2. So, you see that this is symmetric see this upper triangle value is equal to your lower triangle value. So, that is a replica that is a mirror image of this value. Let us interpret this distance matrix the distance between object B and E can be located at the intersection of the fifth row and the second column yielding 42.2. Now, let us interpret that distance matrix the distance between object B and E can be located at the intersection of fifth row and second column that was this one I going to previous slide the fifth row 1 2 3 4 fifth row second column this one 42.2. The same number can be found at the intersection of second row and fifth column because the distance between B and E is equal to the distance between E and B therefore, the distance matrix is always symmetric. Moreover, Note that the entries on the main diagonal are always 0 because the distance of an object to itself has to be 0. Now, we have shown only the lower triangle it would suffice to write down only the lower triangular of the that is half of the distance matrix. Now, let us see the selection of the variables because before doing cluster analysis we have to see whether we have to select all the variables or the variables which is relevant to our problem. It should be noted that a variable not containing any relevant information say the telephone number of each person is worse than useless because it will make the clustering less apparent. The occurrence of several such trash variable will kill the whole clustering because they yield a lot of random terms in the distances thereby hiding the useful information provided by the other variables. Therefore, such non-informative variables must be given a zero weight in the analysis which amount to be deleting them. So, any not important variable you can give zero weightage so that that will not be taken into for calculation. So, the selection of good variable is a non-trivial task and may involve quite some trial and error in addition to subject matter knowledge and common sense. In this respect, so cluster analysis may be considered as an exploratory technique. In this lecture, 
we have seen the effect of standardization, then calculation of different types of distances with the help of example. I have explained how to find out Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance and Minkowski distance. Then formulation and interpretation of n by n matrix. Then I have explained this is one of the input for cluster analysis. If there are n objects, uh, n variables, how to find out the distance between these two variables or objects. Then I have explained how to select relevant variables for the cluster analysis.